Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, there it is, the one and only Agnes Vivarelli and Dan Radio Style <laughs> here to uh, help, uh, help, help you in any way we possibly can. Got a couple great topics today, of course, we're going to be talking about. Agnes, got a little bit of thing that she's going to be reading to us, a little something, something that's going to help us understand what happens when you try to force your manifestation. And I think this is something that a lot of us uh, deal with, grapple with, and there's a lot of different ways we find ourselves forcing. So I can see Anyas and I going into some very fun discussions there. And there's a little something that Goddard shares with us about grudges and how those sometimes can cause some problems for us. We're going to cover that afterwards. So Anyas, how are you first off, first and foremost? Good eye, mate. Good eye, mate. I'm yes. good. I've had my little eggies and I am ready to rock and roll. I've just woken Damn. up not long ago. So happy to have you as my first little face to see you just know how to say all the right things thank you <laughs> so what's uh what's going on with force uh what first off what crazy piece of literature is this uh oh, okay we'll start with that on? okay so neville says this is a neville thing he it's, talks it about is a neville thing or it's not it's a neville thing it's one of neville's little nuggety things okay so neville talks about Ooh. he's talking about he's ret- talking about forces you can't help yourself, can you? <laughs> oh, no, I can't. It's hard. It's hard for me. I'm sorry. I know. There was a bit of delay there. That's why they make mute buttons. <laughs> the mute button. I know. We had a little uh, hiccup on our internet there. That was nice. That was nice. <laughs> Good pause. Okay, Neville yeah. said, somebody asked him, what is the cause of disease and pain? And he says, the physical body is an emotional filter. Many human ailments considered purely physical are now recognized as the root, as in rooted in emotional disturbances. Pain comes from a lack of relaxation. When you sleep, there's no pain. If you are under anesthetic, there's no pain because you're relaxed as it were. If you have pain, it is because you are tense and you're trying to force something. You cannot force an idea into embodiment. You simply appropriate it. It's the attention minus the effort. Only practice will bring you to the point where you can be attentive and still be relaxed. Attention is tension towards an end and relaxation is just the opposite. So here are two completely opposed ideas that you must blend until you learn through practice how to be attentive but not tense. The word contention means attention minus effort. In the state of contention, you are held by the idea without tension. So that's it. Attention minus the effort. That, that yeah, there's so much in there. So I, I, I don't know. I got like three things that I think are kind of fun to talk about here. First, first off, I think one of the funny things, and this was the whole little uh, adage and some of the spiritual stuff, but disease is dis ease yeah right? lack of ease mm. and it's kind of funny that a lot of disease does tend to come from imbalances disharmonies and and bad, you know blocking blockages so i without a doubt the whole concept of when we're forcing anything mm. in our lives i feel like it totally would create sort of that kind of scenario at least that was my understanding of it goddard's kind of saying yeah. it in a slightly different twist but mm. i thought that was kind of interesting mm. um, the way right? Kind of creates yeah. resistance in our lives. And I think a lot of times it, it tends to create frustration when it manifests within us. Like, why isn't this happening? Why don't I have this? Why am I not richer? Why, why whatever? And we keep looking at the fact that we don't have these things. And we want them. We feel like there's this huge need. I need this. Otherwise I can't be happy or I need this because oh. I got to pay bills or right. There's some sort of perceived yeah. pressure on ourselves to make this happen quicker. So then we dig in harder. We dig in our heels even harder on the law of attraction stuff. We're like, all right, I'm going to manifest twice as strong now. And we can't, like you can't force it. And that's where you start to create kind of an energy and balance. Sure. Yeah. And attention, you've got, you got to put your attention on something, but then you got to kind of stop at the acceleration because you, your attention goes on something. There's the focus. But then you've got to stop when the effort, like, I mean, Abraham Hicks talks about efforting. It doesn't work. She talks a lot about the word efforting. So you, what you're doing is you're putting your attention on something, 
but then you're doing it with a soft touch. You just got a light focused attention without that. I got to put my attention on this. Got to focus on this because I'm trying to make it happen. That's where the effort is. And that's the part you got to back off from. So you got to, and I can see why he says it's like you're doing two opposed things. You got to have attention with relaxation and the ideas kind of are opposed. So you got to learn to have, it's a bit like when you first learned to ride a bike, you got to, you ride and you keep falling from the side to side. And then all of a sudden you hit that balance point and then you can feel it and then you can ride the bike. It's the same with this. You've got to have your attention on, I want to manifest X. And then you sort of just get into the balance of riding the bike, your, your attention, you hold it with still a light, good feeling. Cause as soon as you go into tipping the scale, and you start doing it in a hard, difficult way, that's when your energy shifts and it, you're in the wrong vibe. You can't be pushing the effort. You just have a light attention effort. The way I frequently try to describe it with people when I'm, when I'm it, in videos, and I don't know if it gets lost or if it is actually somewhat recognized, but it's, it's that place where I think when we come at it, like, how can I make this happen faster? I feel like just the very nature of coming at it from that angle at all. Mm. However, I feel like it's already creating that sort of, uh, it matters too much. Maybe yeah. it's, there's a lot of pressure on it. It starts to create like what Neville talks about being unnatural with it. Like we start to create this weird imbalance with the thing we're trying to manifest mm. and where we're at now. And we literally see that there's distance between it rather than realizing like we're already there. We're in, you know, I don't, again, I, I tell it's hard like to choose a word that works in your mind, but ne Neville talks about how when you get into the place where you feel it as if the wish is fulfilled mm. and you get it to such a place where it's so real and you truly feel that. And then when you step back to quote reality, you create kind of a bridge from that place in this place. And it kind of, it, a bridge. It creates a means of getting there. Now mm. it takes you a day to get across that bridge a week. I mean, that's yeah. where I feel like people try to rush that aspect too much. And when we rush, we sort of mess the bridge up. You mess that, yeah. that flow you had where you I were think, feeling the wish fulfilled. Yes. And I agree with you. And I think that that whole thing, you've got to have attention from a place of satisfaction, not from a place of I got to, I'm dissatisfied and I've got to get over there. Right. This, the dissatisfaction, well, then you create, it destroys the you create dissatisfaction. More of that yeah, but the dissatisfaction destroys the bridge. It, the bridge or, burns. It burns down. You've got you to walk across the bridge still carrying your satisfaction with you, I think. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Or, or even kind of the other way to look at it, too, is like by the very nature of doing that, you sort of, instead of even burning the bridge, which you do, mm. you, you kind of turn directions and start walking the other direction. Like you're... It, it just, you're not keeping that bridge together. And I, I, yeah, I like your analogy better. We're going to stick with yours, <laughs> but it does. It keeps no, that keep bridge going. built. We unravel no, it more as we discuss that's it. That's true. Like a, it's like a yarn and a sweater. You're like, oh no, this just keeps coming. Oh crud. <laughs> yes. Why I didn't wear anything with strings sticking off it today. No, or not today. But I love that's that. True. I love that. How he talks about, you've got to have attention and then you've got to have relaxation. So there are two parts of how creation can happen without force. Right. Yeah. And he and does, he talks is, about it's the intent of focus, like the ability yeah. to be able to have that attention mm. on your desire, your wish yeah. fulfilled, whatever, yeah. to yeah. the point to where you feel it. And yeah. then, yeah. And then you kind of just like, whoo, relax. Like I got this. Exactly. This, is, this is golden. And that's and it, how Abraham Hicks talks about the art of allowing. They use different words, but they saw dovetails yes. together. That's her. Yes out of allowing is the relaxation without force. And it really, and it's like, even I was talking about this too recently. It's like e when we manifest, especially when you're in the, in the place, like you're away from time. We're taking mm. time out of it. It's right now when we're experiencing it, right? We're with them right now, or we're yeah. in our new house right now, yeah. or so it's always from that right now standpoint. And that's what I love about like you, to your point, like Esther Hicks um, saying, uh, allow her, the art of allowing. It's mm. really, it's not an issue of, not here now, right? None of that ever speaks to that. And it's, it's still acknowledging the fact that it's blooming like a flower. I mean, yeah. a blooming flower is no less a flower at any stage of that blossom, yes. right? It's no less beautiful. It's yeah. no less art of the process. And you can't mm. speed it up. You yeah. can't make a flower faster. Yeah. Just, it, 
Actually, that's if you try, you'll ruin it, right? So it is. It's just, I feel like every time you force it. Flowers are a great uh, expression of the art of allowing now that you've mentioned that. They're, they're doing that without force, without, they've got their attention on what they're doing. They're doing it slowly and they do it well and yeah. then you get a beautiful bloom. And it's like, I do find like working with people a lot, there's such an intense, and I understand that having a desire does become intense sometimes because you really want something and there's nothing wrong with desire, but no. Absolutely. If I could say one thing when people want something, it's not what do I need to do next? I get that. Okay, I'm doing what you said. I'm, do I'm doing self-love. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. What, what else can I do? Right, right. How can I make it Relax. faster? Relax. <laughs> the yeah, fact right? you're not relaxed is impeding... Uh. Yes. Your manifestation, you've got to learn to relax, allow. Not surrender. only relax, like, oh. but enjoy. It's like enjoy. Yes. sitting in a boat that's slowly coasting yes. down the river with the flow of the stream of the river. Don't get all upset with that. You're not in a friggin' outboard. <laughs> right? You're not just cruising down the river. Yeah, you're right. But you're, <laughs> you don't have a motor. So chill and then start to look. Yeah, right. You're like, ee, ee, ee. it is like that, isn't it? And you know, just look around and enjoy the ride. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah that's how we, yeah. everyone wants it to be. So. Yeah, you know, that's going to be the thumbnail I'm going to pick now. Oh, it has to be. If you can get, I don't know how you're going to, like, I don't know how, yeah, we have some plate with in there, that yeah. little face. Yeah, by li I love the little face. That's good. That but it's true. Little... I think a lot of this stuff around trying to get to where you want to go is, is, if you could learn deeply how to relax and let go. And I want to say this because I've been thinking about how to help people relax and let go more. So their manifestations comes in more easily. Now I think the two best ways to be able to do that meditation. And if you can't focus cause okay. your head wanders around a lot, pick like a whole Ho'oponopono meditation or something because you're repeating something and it, be, it washes out and redirects your head to something that's general. So you're not trying to fixate on what you're trying to get. The second thing is yoga. When you're in a yoga pose, I've been doing yoga. I'll put the link down to the lady I'm using because you do poses for extended periods of time. You have to breathe and let go in an uncomfortable position often. It shows you, you either get intensely aggravated and you start to get annoyed because you feel like teaches you how to relax. <laughs> it teaches you how to relax and it teaches you how to let go. So yeah. I find in my own life, because I get, you know, tense about things and I get in, intense about things and I think, okay, and I've been doing this yoga about three or four times a week because I've had a lot of issues with my neck and shoulders because I'm on a computer too much. But I thought, ah, this is brilliant because it really emphasizes this letting go and surrendering and relaxing into things. And if you could take that, what you do in yoga into your life, when you do yoga, what happens is you drag that more into your life. You're not, you're letting go of the whole forcing thing totally. And it's brilliant because it's a physical thing that helps you let go mentally and emotionally. And those that do yoga will already know that. Yeah, it kind of it teaches you to kind of be one with the what you're doing, like one in the moment. Yeah. Like it, there's different parts of it, different levels of effort, different yeah. strains, and then there's times where maybe it's uncomfortable. Right, like there's the each through going through all the and I'm not into yoga, all right, but I've, I've you know I've seen it, I've seen people do it, and it looks yeah. like a lot of work. I frequently I'll eat popcorn and watch people do yoga. It's just something I do for a hobby, but <laughs> but no, it teaches a lot of those relaxation techniques it as you does it does just, and you don't have to do advanced you know you no. don't have to pretzel yourself into hard positions you know you can literally be doing very simple poses but you do them for whole you hold them often for five minutes now five minutes is you go that's not long well, i can tell you when you're holding a yoga oh, pose for five minutes free. you see the levels of uncomfortability and the fighting that your body goes into and then you go okay i've got to relax so i can hold this it teaches you the art of allowing really deeply and I there's certain poses I find they make me angry and I know why it makes me angry is because I'm uncomfortable and it's bringing up a pain in my body and I I, I have to either learn to surrender and let the pain go and I still on certain poses I fight you know it's like nah. 
So it teaches you when you do it in your physical body, then it helps you with your mental and emotional stuff. And it's so interesting. And, and oddly you become it. Yeah. And it helps Huge. work on your core to keep the analogy going right? yes. with yoga. You get the core strength and in time it yeah. becomes easier and easier. And it's the same with manifestation. It's the same with using the law of attraction or whatever we want to call yeah, it. Yeah. It gets easier as you kind of learn to just enjoy the ride and understand this is happening. These things work. It, it, it's, it's the constant focus on how I don't have it right now. Yeah. It, that, that's not, that never gets you anywhere. It's never going no, to, it's, no. it's, it's allowing it to happen. Yeah. It's blooming. It's blossoming. Let it be, let it happen. Yeah. And it's, and that's hard. I know it's hard because when you're in the middle of lots of things going wrong in your life or, you know, you don't have enough money, your ex has left you, you're, you don't like your job. Yeah. Yeah. So you want the pain from a heartbreak. Yeah. yeah. But even, yeah. even if you're doing like yoga meditation during heartbreak, you can let go of the grief. You can let go of the, just the pain but see you can also let go of the interpretation of what's hurting you so because i think That's a true. lot of the pain that we experience emotionally is because of how we interpret things like for example someone's left me that means i'm not good enough and i'm not loved it's like no them leaving it doesn't have to mean that you can practice and i know when i got left by somebody that i'd been in a long-term relationship with I, I, yes, I allowed myself moments to cry, but I also stayed on top of myself mentally all day with affirmations and I am loved, I am loved, I am loved. Because I thought, am I, I remember walking into my friend's house, who I still do the law of attraction with today, and she said, and it was like two weeks after my husband had left or my relationship had broken up, whoever that was, and she said, my God, you look like you're in love. And I said, great. I said, I've cracked it. Because yeah. I finally convinced myself that love wasn't about that person. It was mine. And that took a hell of a lot of work. Because if I gave myself five minutes to focus on what apparently they had done, I went down into the pit of despair and heartbrokenness, couldn't eat and couldn't sleep. So I knew if I could stay on top of myself mentally, I didn't have to go into the depths of those emotions and go through the trauma of it. So it's kind of like I managed to skim over the trauma for long enough that it no longer hurt me. Right. And I, I, it's kind of similar to, to how we allow our attention to go in certain places. And sometimes it's, it just happens naturally. I think a lot of us just kind of follow it. And in the case of a breakup, right, you could very easily go into this. Why didn't he break? Why did he break up with me? What am I not good enough? Is this something I'm wrong? I know he kept saying I needed to work out more. Am I fat? I mean, right. And we just spend all this internal mental dialogue talking about stuff that just makes us feel worse. Yeah. Now, I get your breakups there. I mean, I've been through breakups too and it sucks. Yeah. But focusing on the breakup by far makes it worse and it certainly doesn't help you get them back any quicker. Yeah. Uh, it, what it is is it's focusing, you know, on, all right, well, some things have happened. Let's take some self-reflection. Why did we break up? Is there something that I need to learn here or can learn? Is there something where maybe I wasn't being as good as I could be for myself, not necessarily mm. to them or any of that, but uh, was, is this really a healthy relationship? Were we fighting all the time? Why? Is this healthy? Am I just trying to get someone back because right now I'm, I've got a void that I'm trying to fill? Again, there's a lot of self-reflection that I think we can look at and learn from. And that helps, I think, mm. rebuild the relationship. It helps kind of get does. things back to a better place. And it does. I, that's it what you're does. trying to do, right? If you're trying to just find yeah. new love, it's a different story. But I know we get a lot of people that are going through breakups and I've been there. It hurts yeah. you anything to make the pain stop. But the yeah. problem is, is the pain's part of that journey. And it's like, a, like almost yeah. a switch that we can sort of turn off when we decide, Hey, you know what? I'm going to start thinking about something else. Mm. Right? And yeah. I know it's a challenge. It takes it's practice. Stress, it takes practice. It does. That's for sure. Yeah. And that's like the ultimate, I think when it comes to trying to control our focus, if you will, which is really what Goddard frequently talks about. Um, if if we understood the power of our thoughts, we would be mm. better stewards of them, right? We would mm. we wouldn't have wayward thoughts, uh, or at least we'd try to minimize that at any point we could. And mm. I kind of like that stance because I do feel like we do create all the time, and whatever I'm thinking about is something I'm yep. putting energy towards. Yep. And if it's not something that's good or beneficial to me or certainly anyone else, then I shouldn't be thinking about it. Mm. And I'm easier said than done. I know. Yeah. Oh, You've got a good. lifetime to practice, though. 
Oh, we sure do. <laughs> sure do. Let me tell you. And you don't get it perfect. I'll tell you that. That's for no, darn sure. No, no, I'm better, sorry. but no. you do get more comfortable with it. I find. I think it's. Um, I find the journey gets more fun uh, along the way. It's. Yeah. It's been, been enjoyable. Nice. So do, yeah. So I kind of think it's funny that we sort of came full circle on the whole disease thing, but it it does seem like when we when we try to force things in our life and we try to force situations, it tends to mm. kind of. Uh, push us up into a corner, I feel like sometimes and it, it just it really isn't a good place to be manifesting from. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so I wanted to do a small moment and talk about, which I think is similar, but Goddard talks about the way we hold other people. And I, I think this is just another piece of advice. I know a lot of us, uh, we go through days, we have struggles. We maybe have someone that broke up with us. We may have people we work with, uh, work with that we don't get along with. Maybe we have a boss we don't like. Maybe there's someone at the coffee shop that just recently started that just doesn't seem to like us. <laughs> when we think of these people in negative ways, I feel like it, well, I don't feel like Goddard talks about it too, but we're, we're basically putting out an energy that if they're not cool with gets reflected back on ourselves. Yeah. And in doing that, we tend to create more drama in our lives. So mm -hmm. this is ties into kind of the disease thing, but at the same time, it's one of those other places where I think we need to be mindful of, of our, uh, our, my, our, our inner dialogues. So this is a, in at your command. Mm -hmm. um, just a real quick little thing here. Consciousness being God. If you hold in consciousness, anything against man, you are binding that condition in your world. But to release man from all condemnation is to free yourself so that you may rise to any level necessary. Therefore, it, no condemnation to those. Whoops. There is therefore no condemnation to those. Jesus Christ. Therefore, a very good practice before you enter into your meditation is first to free every man in the world from blame hmm. or law is never violated. And you can rest confidently in the acknowledge and acknowledge that every man's conception of himself is going to be his reward. So you do not have to bother yourself about seeing whether or not man gets what you consider he should get for life makes no mistakes and always gives man that which man first gives himself. And I just thought that that was really a neat tie in too to mm. the, the meditation component that you just talked about. And it's, it's kind of like when you go to bed angry, you don't want to do that, right? You don't want to go to bed yeah. angry at a spouse. That's not fun when you've got your back against him. You can just feel that hatred. No, yeah, work out or something way. like go to bed better. At least say, I love you. And we can talk tomorrow or something. Yeah, but And then practice like, the whole Pono Pono while you got yes. your backs to each other. Yes. To the shit in you. You've probably been there before. I have. That to me is one of the worst feelings being in a home where yeah. you're not happy. Like I can't get away from my unhappy mm. awesomeness. And yeah, it's hot. And, That's hard yeah, work. I've, I've created some fun, fun roles, yeah. Uh, places in my life. But yeah, it's very important, I think, for us to realize that whether there's people in the world that have harmed us, wronged us, that mm. are a third party, that are whatever, mm. yeah. us holding them in any sort of ill regard is only yeah. hurting us. Yeah. It's not hurting them. It's not yeah. helping anybody. Uh, it's not helping anybody. I mean, so again, it's Goddard. I, you know, mm. I agree with it. I, without a doubt, yeah. it, a lot of the stuff I've read in my spiritual junk totally jibes with what Goddard's talking about there. So it's just another one of those things that I think is good to keep in mind. Spiritual junk. That's a whole new playlist. Yeah. <laughs> spiritual junk. You can say that in a dirty way too. That's your spiritual junk. You tell me or what? I oh, oh, love, some, oh, <laughs> love yeah. some of the words I did it. used to describe. Check it to PG thirteen right there. Cool. That's my spiritual junk you're looking at. Yeah. I'm up here. I'm up here on this. I'm up here. <laughs> That's my spiritual <laughs> junk. Up here. I'm looking down at my junk. Oh God. We knew that was gonna pop up at some point. That's I you know, I, I don't plan these things, but when they show up, I run into them, of uh, course. <laughs> yes, I don't I don't stop. I jump in both feet. Ooh, it's cold. <laughs> I know you do. I right. know you do. That's why we keep doing well, this. Well, hopefully, I know. Because <laughs> it's a hopefully little that bit kinda of helps. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it, too. That's the, yeah. <laughs> it's the video that we do for everybody else. And I'll be honest, everybody, it's also the 30 minutes her and I get to talk to each other off the record and just. Off the record. Um, it is therapeutic. And, uh, it is. Off the record. Unfortunately, no one can we see. We go into, you know, we go into. <laughs> 
We go into one of those little secret rooms where no one can hear us, right? Yes, a little pod. A skiff. That's what they call it here in the United States, a skiff. It's uh, a skiff. security compartment. It's information. I don't know, some sort oh, of stupid thing the president's going to do. Information private yeah. and all that. Yeah. yeah, so no electronic thing can Ooh. eavesdrop on them, right? No satellites can, like, drop down and hit them in the head. I don't know, whatever Fantastic. it is. Yeah, that's good a good, good. I see I've taught, learned a new word. <laughs> the skiff, well, skiff is an acronym. It's not really a word, but yeah, walk around and say that, and just like look at people funny when they're like, "What's a skiff?" And you're like, "You don't know what a skiff is?" Oh, and just walk away and just watch what happens. It'll be great, great fun. <laughs> Get on Google. They'll just, they'll just be like scratching their head. They're like, "What the <laughs> frick just happened?" I don't even know. <laughs> Random oh, persons walking around going skiff, skiff, skiff. Anyway, there we go. Do you, have, do you have anything? Do you have anything kind of big going on these days? I know we don't normally plug, but I, I I'm just kind of wondering. You got, I know you're out in Australia and you're coming back to yeah, back to London Europe next soon. week. Um, I think I'm looking. What I am doing is incubating a new course, so I will oh. uh, let people know about that when it comes right. out. Lucky people, another course coming. Woohoo! Yeah, and just um. Yeah, just not. I'm not, not going to write another book. I don't think no. at all. Stop for a while. I've done, done a trilogy. That's enough. <laughs> I feel like there's I, like my brother's an author too. Like I feel like there's a there's a certain something about writing, and it's it's almost like one they're hard to finish, right? But you're almost yeah. like once you do finish one, isn't it kind of like oh my god, that was just such an experience. It was. Yeah, I, it was. It's a lot more work than it looks. Uh, that's something I thought writing a book, how hard can this be? Boy, oh boy, after yeah. writing three, you just see how many years of... Oh, and editing. Editing is the worst because you still miss stuff, right? You still, yeah. like, you're like, I've edited this thing like 18 times and there's still stuff in print. Ah. Yeah, yeah, no, oh. it's good. I mean, I oh. think, that, you know, we're lucky we create, we're creators, we create stuff, YouTube's information, passing on other people's, you know, wonderful teachings, what's helped us and, and... You know, there's so many things that you can go on to create as long as I think you put your inspiration into it. What about you? What's happening in your end? Uh, you know, it, the channel's been oddly growing well, and I've been having that mm. fun with that. Uh, work's going good. Got a got a fun little trip that's coming up around work stuff. So nothing too exciting on my side, mm. but still working on. I've kind of done a little bit of something with my um, my office. It's uh, no one's really noticed, which is fine. But I got a whole new desk, which is actually works out a lot better. Uh, you can kind of see the glass over here, which I did, yeah. didn't used to have extra desk and stuff. So it's um, that's been kind of fun, and it's. Uh, made like my different um, when I do the videos because I put different perspectives when I do the lives versus when yeah. I do my normal recordings. I, I showed you my room one time, but uh, I, God knows what crazy stuff might be in here. So yeah, I, no. <laughs> I don't want to flash the camera. Right? You got to like you know sanitize a room before you start yeah. showing people stuff. You right? left your underpants on the floor, didn't you? Right? <laughs> that would be the least of my problems, I'm sure. But God knows what crazy is. <laughs> Well, I think we've covered it. Is yeah. there anything else you want to? Anyway, that's all. I just let people wonder what the heck yeah. I'm talking about. That should be fun. <laughs> what the hell is Dan saying? Who knows? No one does know. Well, anyway, thank you all for joining us. Uh, Anya's uh, always the best doing <laughs> You are one of my favorite people to talk to, so always likewise, appreciate it. Likewise, likewise. We always have fun. I and, think so. Um, yeah, I'm... Actually, there's something I want to just before we go, because you loving comedy, love there's comedy. an Australian comedian that I'm going to send you a very short clip oh. to, and I will put okay. the clip down below because I've mentioned it, so I won't. Um, nice, nice. Hold back. Do you, do but you, just, do you want to say his name or is that going to go uh, some yes. trouble? No, no, Carl Barron is his name. B-A-R-R-O-N. Carl with okay. a C. Okay. Um, he's probably the, the best of Australia at the moment. He talks about really ridiculous australian things because yeah, like jim jeffries pretty much moved here to my understanding so he's not even australian anymore right oh I, okay no i didn't know I think, he moved. I, yeah jim no i'm being circuit well he's been working in hollywood or something i think okay. he's got some sitcom show or whatever i don't think he maybe he's filming out of australia but mm. i just assumed he probably moved out here but okay he's the only other major famous uh australian comedy guy, comedy else? guy at the moment yeah, there's lots, but I think on the bigger scale, yeah. Right, no, right, but right. That make it out. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. I, I don't mean to diminish anybody. No, no. Off, no, no off, I've done, right. I did stand up one time and it's a hell of a lot of hard work. I've got it actually in my channel. Just search stand up. You'll find it. I'm not going to post it, but um, uh, yeah. yeah it's, no, let's put the link down below so we can have a giggle. Right. I'm going to put the link. I'll share it. <laughs> Go 
have one. All right, right, everybody. It's a wrap. Thanks, all. Yes, it is. Thank you. We'll do another one soon. Yep. Thanks, all. As always. Hang on, Dan. Don't go away.